Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's CC Webinar Live keynote and panel discussion session, and thank you for joining. We also would like to thank Equinix and Omantel for sponsoring today's CC Webinar Live session. And now I would like to pass on the microphone to Eric to introduce our keynote speaker and later on to moderate the panel session. If you're joining us remotely, please do use the chat box option throughout the session to ask your questions. That's all from my side. Eric, over to you. Thank you very much, Laura, and, uh, and welcome to all of you uh, out there. Um, the topic we're going to discuss today is uh, are the digital corridors. So why the Middle East is a growing hotspot for digital exchange. And the spotlight today is on uh, Muscat. Um, I will not do this by myself, and I'm very honored to have uh, Fahad from Omantel and Martin from Equinix with me, and I'll give them a quick minute to introduce themselves. Fahad, please, over to you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, this is Fahad uh, al Harti from Omantel Wholesale Unit. Uh, mainly, I manage the uh, content uh, business, and um, I'm the focal uh, uh, point for uh, MC1 data center when it comes to business development and uh, sales. Uh, plus to this, I do also international capacity uh, sales uh, and managing my own uh, customers. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much, uh, Fahad, and, uh, and welcome to the, to, to, to the session. Martin, over to you. Hello, thank you, Eric. Um, well, good morning, uh, or good afternoon, I should say. Martin Atkinson, I've been with Equinix for 10 years. I'm in the business development team. Um, we work in a subset, um, my colleagues and I are uh, called the interconnection team, and our focus is really about everything that grows, peering and, in, and interconnection in the broadest sense. We're looking at nurturing ecosystems and supporting customers to do business inside our facilities. So um, in a nutshell, that's obviously why I'm, I'm so interested in this particular topic of digital corridors. And uh, earlier in the year, I, in, in fact, wrote a, a blog on this very topic, which uh, I'd recommend people go find if they want a bit more of a deeper dive after this after this discussion. They will certainly find it. And thank you very much, Martin, and honor and uh, welcome to, to you as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, this webinar offers a spotlight on the Muscat <coughs> IBX data center called MC1. Uh, and any internet exchange, a joint venture between Equinix and, uh, and Omantel, uh, which are uh, strategically located in the heart of the digital ecosystem, connecting Africa, uh, Asia, and Europe. Um, this partnership is capitalizing on a unique strategy to extend the reach of the subsea uh, cable landing in uh, Muscat to the MC1. Uh, this con confluence of uh, cable systems with uh, carrier neutral uh, co-location interconnection and peering has uh, accelerated the growth of digital corridors linked with Oman, including dynamic markets like Singapore and Pakistan, as well as the local market. Uh, and this is to expect it to uh, continue to grow further. Now, uh, to move on uh, uh, with this, I would like to invite Martin from Equinix to, uh, to share his uh, keynote presentation. And Martin, thank you very much. We are happy to, to, to listen to you and please share your presentation and um, and over to you. Thank you, Eric, thank you. Um, so so um, as I said before, this, um, this particular uh, webinar, um, for me at least, um, follows the track of the uh, Digital um, Corridors blog, which I wrote earlier in the year. This is a kind of an enhanced version of it, I would say, but there is a lot more in terms of references and bibliography that you can find to identify my sources of information should you wish to on the Equinix blog site. Um, when we look at the Middle East and Gulf region in particular, what really stands out and what is central really to this whole story is the location of uh, and direction of the cable landing stations and the cable systems which they serve. Um, they, they obviously land at various points around the Gulf region uh, each of those um, represents uh, a potential um, way station uh, on, on, on the corridor. So uh, many of these following notes and illustrations are from the blog, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and um, the submarine cable map you see here really kind of explains the flow of traffic towards European destinations. 
everything is flowing from Asia Pacific, from Africa, via the Gulf up towards um, Europe. Uh, and it historically has done that for historic um, political reasons for, for, for many decades, actually, uh, as uh, modern technologies and submarine cable systems have been built, they've tended to build out and, and self-fulfill this digital corridor, which we're talking about today. Um, the traffic which flows along them, um, internet traffic, 80% of it is, is content that falls to maybe 10 to 15 largest global co uh, content providers worldwide, um, predominantly supported and delivered by internet service providers. Um, so the traffic is effectively tromboning into Europe. Um, and the, um, the gateways and landing points for the submarine cable um, systems um, have, uh, although the way stations have quite a lot of development still to do, the potential for these various locations is in hosting internet destinations and content origins, which traditionally and currently and historically have been located particularly in Europe. By keeping traffic local, the, um, the traffic will no longer trombone into Europe uh, and the benefits to that are, um, are manifold actually, not just in terms of performance, but in terms of cost, also in terms of security um, and generally speaking, interconnection growth and uh, competition tends to enhance uh, national GDP as well, but maybe we'll get a chance to reference that later. So when we look at um, how Middle East traffic is growing um, because of this digital corridor. Actually, MENA and GCC region is actually probably um, the largest growth region at the present time in the world at around 42% growth year on year. These are telegeography and Cisco VNI um, predictions uh, and analyses. Uh, the thing to bear in mind here is that percentage of growth is not at all the same as uh, size of market. Asia Pacific is easily the largest market in internet terms with over 3 billion connected people, uh, but uh, its growth is a modest 22%. The Middle East uh, 611 million uh, users on the internet across the Gulf uh, and Middle East regions, but the traffic is growing at 42%. Um, we can obviously delve into more, more why that is, um, but um, it's really to do with adoption of new technologies and available bandwidth and also cost of bandwidth that really controls a bit like turning on a tap, the amount of traffic which can flow um, and the amount of demand that's placed upon the networks by the end users. So at the moment, MENA is the growth area. We can expect LATAM at some point when new technologies facilitate the difficult geography uh, of the region to catch up. So we could expect to see LATAM maybe as a later growth area. Asia PAC is still massive and always will be, but its growth is unlikely to be in the 42% anymore um, to be determined. But um, that's just kind of a general overview. Um, in terms of the digital corridor itself, the size of the nodes you see in this diagram indicate the volumes of traffic terminating uh, in or originating from the specific country. Um, so, for instance, traffic generated by broadband consumers in Turkey is actually picked up and delivered by many servers and content caches placed in Germany. So Germany, Turkey is, is a major kind of axis for digital, um, uh, digital cor corridor delivering content. Uh, but the interesting thing is, and we'll be looking into this, is the way that this is changing um, and historic corridors are, are shrinking or growing less quickly than some others and, and some are on either new corridors or actually we're getting to a local content hosting position, which is uh, what we mentioned at the beginning. So if we delve into individual countries, and this is telegeography data, but presented as pie charts, um, <clears throat> we'll talk about the delta a bit later on. Um, what I did was analyze a traffic over a four year period from a 2016 to 2020 uh, and looked at the volumes of traffic being tromboned, if you will. Basically, HTTPS recalls to various uh, servers in Europe and the content being delivered back. Uh, and what you can see for Egypt is that um, a vast proportion of its traffic 
um, and content is being delivered out of France. Again, historically and politically, this probably isn't a great surprise. Uh, it's also enhanced by the fact that the submarine cable systems passing through Egypt, which most of them do, or many of them do at least, and hitting the Mediterranean then head off towards Marseille. Uh, and so there is a natural kind of synergy there between those, those two endpoints. But also we see here interesting growth uh, with the, um, Italy particularly. Again, UK is, a, is rather more traditional. Uh, we are seeing changes, but because of the cable systems and the lack of a carrier neutral facility in uh, Egypt. So uh, it's likely that this particular trend here you see will continue for the foreseeable future. The interesting thing is the way traffic is growing. So in the four years, traffic with France increased 450% uh, over the four years. In the UK, it increased by 280%. And in, with, with Italy, it increased by 270%. So although Egypt is still very, very much dependent on Europe for content, um, it, it is growing uh, very much towards uh, France at the current time. Turkey is actually the largest content sink, if you will, in the Middle East. 44% of all of the region's uh, internet provision capacity or bandwidth uh, is, is headed towards Turkey. It is the power user as a nation in the Middle East region. Um, the bulk of traffic flowed through Germany or from Germany uh, towards uh, Turkey. Um, but when I've been analyzing this in the last five to six years, Bulgaria appeared on the radar and is now growing at a much faster rate than Frankfurt. So this is an example of content origins moving from historically Frankfurt, uh, London and other places towards uh, Turkey. Because Turkey isn't a fully deregulated market and there isn't the same kind of ease of uh, interconnection as there is in, say, Bulgaria. So Bulgaria, Sofia particularly, which is a, we've got carry neutral facilities there, is picking up the bulk of that demand and content is now being increasingly delivered from Sofia and Bulgaria. This is good news, of course, for Bulgaria. Uh, so um, there is also growth happening um, with Turkey to a lesser extent with the Netherlands. Um, and, but there's been very large increase in traffic towards France, which is probably the new submarine cable systems. But again, it's the same as what I said about size of growth is not the same as size of market. France uh, as a destination uh, for um, or, or an origin is, um, is actually considerably smaller than Frankfurt or, 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 or Sofia. And so although the growth is dramatic, it's, it's so well behind at the moment. When we look at Saudi Arabia, um, we are looking at the number two power user uh, in the Middle East. Uh, Saudi Arabia and Turkey between them are the two big users uh, of provisioned uh, bandwidth and capacity. Some of this is to do with adoption of technologies. Um, so Saudi Arabia, 18% of provision capacity is towards Saudi Arabia. Uh, reason is a very high uh, rate of internet penetration, 90 5% of the population is on the internet. Social media use is around 80%. Um, IP video is extremely popular in Saudi Arabia with 90, nearly 97% of internet users using some video content every month. Unlike Turkey, Saudi Arabia's traffic is more evenly distributed across the flat markets, Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam, Paris, um, with Italy also now coming into play. So um, Saudi Arabia is, uh, also becoming an important hub for inter-regional, intra-regional traffic with the UAE and Oman, which you can see also, uh, I think, uh, on, on this pie chart. So when we look at UAE, which is a true digital economy, um, it's uh, the third largest uh, in terms of internet capacity behind Saudi Arabia and Turkey. Uh, it's uh, rapidly growing as a digital economy. Uh, it hosts uh, in Dubai uh, in a partnership we do. We have a number of Equinix facilities there. And um, there are um, basically, uh, I would say there are two interconnection hubs um, of note in the UAE. One, uh, which is the Equinix uh, facilities in Dubai operated in a partnership with Equinix. 
and that's do. And then also Frigera and the Smart Hub are operated by Etisalat. Um, there is also the UAE Internet Exchange, UEIX, um, run by DKIX, which is an important part of any peering ecosystem uh, as an essential component. Um, and so that is a, a critical component for making uh, Dubai and um, UAE a digital hub as well. Uh, Equinix's aim, I should say at this point, is very much aimed at changing remote traffic exchange um, into uh, more nationally and locally exchange traffic. The benefits to this, as I've said previously, are application performance improvements, end user quality of experience for things like stream video or gaming, um, and what comes next, such as VR and AR applications, embedded computing, and the real big disruptive technologies we expect to be part of everyday life for many of us in the next five to 10 years. Um, but also cloud latency, uh, web applications, less uh, security is improved, of course, by less tromboning and hairpinning of traffic. So it's less exposed to the internet backbone. Uh, and of course, lowered costs and lowered costs are important for facilitating interconnection growth and content exchange. Uh, and the way that plays out is generally in terms of growing national digital economy and growing GDP. There are some, uh, I won't go into them on this uh, particular webinar, but there are some excellent resources available. One of which I'll be mentioning later, which was commissioned by the Internet Society. There are many highlighting the link between uh, low cost of bandwidth interconnection growth and content distribution and uh, GDP in a positive sense. So finally, uh, when we look at Aman, and obviously our esteemed colleagues Aman uh, tell being on this call with us, in the past few year, years, uh, Aman is actually a little bit of a miracle uh, with a 66% increase in provision capacity towards it, which is the biggest in the Middle East. Uh, the confluence, as, as Eric mentioned earlier, of the cable systems undoubtedly is instrumental in that, but also Amantel's um, openness and willingness to work in a very um, constructive way with Equinix is also uh, immensely important. I can't un understate how important that is and how much appreciated it is. Um, so traffic uh, and provision capacity with Singapore um, has grown as almost almost 6,000% in the last four years. Now that's nothing to do with digital corridors. If anything, that may be generating a new digital corridor towards the east, which is something that's unheard of in the Middle East and Gulf region. And this is very, very good news. It looks like the shoots of new growth. Uh, and I'm very encouraged by this. Also within uh, the region, uh, growth of traffic 1,000% with Pakistan in the last four years. We expect to see more of this. And this really does look like Muscat and Amman becoming a regional hub of substance, not relying upon historic European destinations. Uh, so we expect this to continue. And obviously, this is very much the thrust of our partnership with Amantel to facilitate this and make it make it so. Obviously, uh, Muscat's landing of, um, I think it's 11 large cable systems, but correct me if I've got that wrong, Farhad, it's certainly rising to 13 or 14 in the coming uh, years, months and years. Uh, and this uh, increase in cable systems will actually change the way that traffic flows from Middle East and Africa towards Europe. Uh, and what we expect is that more of it will land in Oman and be exchanged locally. Uh, this is just a kind of a, a histogram bar chart looking at the way that the traffic has changed. Um, Saudi Arabia and Turkey on a different chart to the rest because they're several orders of magnitude larger in terms of provision capacity. So the rest would be almost invisible if we put them on the same scale. But the important thing here is the rate of growth. <clears throat> and over an extended period of time, high rates of growth, such as we're seeing in Oman, will play catch up. And that's fully what we expect to happen not necessarily as a destination for eyeballs connected and consuming on devices, so much as an interconnection hub, more on the lines of what happens in locations such as Singapore or London. Um, so what's interesting here is with Saudi Arabia, the biggest percentage changes between the, uh, the two periods, 2016 and 2020. Saudi Arabia is increasing traffic towards Djibouti and Iraq 
For Turkey, the biggest changes, and I would say the number one that really is quite striking when you look on telegeography at this data, is Bulgaria is really starting to supplant Frankfurt and would expect it actually to be the primary destination within three to five years. France is growing dramatically, but from a very small base. When we look at the rest, um, to call out here again, obviously the traffic is always upwards uh, on internet. Um, that's just to do with, you know, adoption of technologies and cost of bandwidth and more connected subscribers. But the interesting things are, as I mentioned, Egypt's a growth of traffic towards France, which increasing reliance on Europe, not surprising because of where it is on cable systems. Uh, Oman, Singapore and Pakistan is quite, quite striking. Um, UAE, uh, there's uh, signs of more regional hubbing with connections to Kenya, Africa and Qatar locally. Uh, Qatar's increase in traffic towards Singapore, the east again rather than to Europe, although Germany is also increasing as a content origin. And then for Iraq, increasing in traffic uh, towards Saudi Arabia and Turkey. So what is it exactly that we are looking for uh, as Equinix? Um, having been operating peering ecosystems and interconnection hubs for more than 20 years, uh, we understand well what are the components and the requirements to make things fly. Uh, and uh, so I'd just like to delve into this a bit right now. Um, I'd like to say at the start that uh, a true Middle East hub, um, which has been uh, a long time coming, um, requires certain things. Uh, it needs to be at the centre of the flows of traffic across the globe, whether from Western Europe to India, uh, from Eastern Europe to Africa, <clears throat> all of these locations, the Middle East and Gulf region is actually at the center of the action, if you will. Traffic flows through and traditionally has not stopped on its way to Europe. Now increasingly, we expect it to land uh, and to pick up content locally. If we can build peering ecosystems as well, then it will change the whole look of, and feel of the Middle East uh, to being central to digital transformation and digital economies. The Internet Society has produced um, a report on MENA infrastructure, which I'd urge everyone to go find if you can. I will be putting a link up on this slide. And if this slide is available afterwards, I do urge you to go and read that report. It is absolutely excellent and has actually informed much of the blog, which came before that I wrote and also this presentation now. It explains what's been missing in the Middle East and what's needed um, to, to turn the Middle East into a global destination or hub in its own right. So what's needed? Geographic location, the Middle East has it. Uh, you're um, located perfectly between three to four global regions with extremely large numbers of consumers. Um, Asia Pacific with 3.1 billion interconnected customers, uh, internet connected customers. India with 1.5 billion. Africa with a billion. LATAM somewhere around a billion as well. Uh, although that's not part of the of the hubbing uh, that Middle East represents. These are the bigger growth areas for the future. And for the three or four regions that we're looking at, Europe, Eastern Europe, um, Africa and uh, Asia Pacific, the location of the Middle East and Gulf region is critical. Apart from being centre of things, what do you also need? So a carrier neutral facility such as Equinix operates, and this very much dear to my heart, must propel, pro, sorry, must provide a compelling business case for internet service providers and content providers to land and peer rather than to exchange traffic or serve content from Western Europe. Uh, so the hub must host significant content and cloud origins that were previously reached remotely supporting private and public internet exchange peering. So both co-location, cross-connects and IX are all essential. 90% of peering, as I often say to anyone who gives me half a chance, 90% of all peering happens over physical cross-connects. A mere 10% happens on internet exchange. Internet exchange is essential, but it's not the only component. You need co-location space and that's where Equinix comes in. Um, so a true hub will host global and regional ISPs supporting private and public peering um, to disintermediate, not a nice word, but basically if you can offload traffic between uh, your neighbors, why would you pay an upstream to deliver it for you? And that's what IX and peering is all about for ISPs. Again, that's something that we aim to facilitate in our facilities. Um, 
And obviously that significantly grows the, the, the choice of transit providers and upstreams, produces a competitive element and changes uh, everything to become a magnetic destination where people want to exchange traffic. Um, interconnection and traffic grows uh, at a dramatic rate by orders of magnitude and the effect on national digital economy and gross domestic product is documented elsewhere. So it's a win-win for all parties concerned once the process starts. Um, it will reduce reduction, uh, cause a reduction in backbone traffic, hairpinning and trombone into Europe and will break the reliance on European hubs. Um, the most important component of this because of the submarine cable systems we mentioned at the beginning is easy and cost effective access and cost effective means not so expensive that it's impossible. Um, so once again, a true Middle East hub needs content and digital media, needs ISPs and carriers, and needs cloud and uh, IT uh, networks. Uh, and these are mainly autonomous systems, internet networks. Again, just reiterating this, co-location space and power is as important as IX. You can't have one without the other, just like love and marriage. 90% uh, of internet traffic is privately peered on physical cross connects, 10% is peered on IX. There is a place for both and both of those are present in Muscat in our facility uh, and what will be future facilities as well in partnership with Amantel. Just finally getting to the Equinix mission statement, um, we've been doing this for now, um, what, 23 years. A company was founded by Al Avery and Jay Adelson who realized that existing opportunities for network interconnection uh, would require um, be required to support the rapid growth of the internet as was happening in 1998, 2000. And they realized that scaling the internet would require a platform of neutral data centers to avoid carrier tied facilities uh, and the various practices that often come with that, that stifle growth. So um, they believe that the platform would act as the interconnection points for networks of networks and uh, form the internet and allow it to grow at an unprecedented rate. And, and all I can say is, well, so it has come to pass. Equinix obviously isn't the only co-location provider in the world, but we are now the largest. Um, and certainly this formula of carrier neutral facilities supporting the bedrock is peering ecosystems uh, and content distribution hubs is at the bedrock of what we do. Everything else on top, the IT transformation, digital transformation, uh, cloud on ramps, etc., is all built on this bedrock of network hub and internet services. Uh, so what's the Equinix name? It's a concatenation of three components, equality, neutrality, and internet exchange. And basically the vision reflected in our name is, it combines our core beliefs, equality in our customers, vendor neutrality, and obviously internet exchange. Uh, I think really frankly, that's it for me. I hope I haven't spent too much um, delivering this and uh, I look forward now to handing you over to Farhad answering any questions and um, thank you very much for listening thank you very much martin and um, before we go to 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 fahad because we're really eager to listen to his uh, keynote presentation as well just a quick one because you you were talking so much about growth and in the region and and the the, the main gcc and then the, the middle east the gulf region so um just a quick one while the region is, is growing so far, do you expect that we will uh, see more, let's say, traffic remain local rather than, you know, all the way up to, to, yes. to Europe? And, and can you maybe, um, you pinpoint on this already, Martin, a little bit, but maybe you, you can tell us again or then um, uh, why that is and what are the main drivers? Yeah, well, so first of all, there's demand side and the demand side and the reason for the growth in um in Turkey and Saudi Arabia is to do with population size, but more particularly to do with the number of connected devices and people who are actually using the internet. Some of that is to do with cost of bandwidth, it's to do, do with national GDP as it stands and disposable income for people to afford the bandwidth, afford their internet connections uh, and their broadband and actually to buy the devices that will consume 4K video streamed on multiple devices and you know, video on demand uh, on various set top boxes, etc. All of that stuff drives the demand and make no mistake, 4K video streams in a household on four or five different devices, if you've got kids <laughs> like we have, um, is the norm, right? You know, maybe one kid is on three different devices at the same time, all streaming video. So 
the content origins then, uh, if they're being served, that content from Europe is the reason for that, for the tromboning and the digital corridor. The content origins themselves, the, the big content providers, the top 10 to 15 that we all know um, and consume on a daily basis are gradually moving their content further eastwards out of Western Europe and further into the Gulf region. To the extent that the hub operator and the regulator and the incumbent provider enables that process to take place without getting in the way too much, it will bring the content closer. And then the important thing is to make sure that the cost for people and the ease of people to access that content locally is uh, let's say stacks up against the business case for continuing to do it from Europe. Uh, and that those are the two components essentially. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's move ahead with uh, Fahad al uh, from from Omantel. And uh, Fahad, please, the floor is yours and we're very happy to, to listen to you and to see what you can share with us. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Eric, uh, Martin. Interesting uh, presentation, especially on the growth of traffic in uh, Oman. And hopefully this uh, will continue also. Uh, uh, good evening, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, today we're going uh, to highlight uh, on uh, Oman, MC1, and about Omantel and Omantel capabilities. Uh, Omantel has become one of the most uh, major telecom operators in the Middle East, with present across uh, nine countries and serving, uh, uh, serving almost 50 million end customers. Uh, also, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, Omantel uh, subsidiaries and uh, the companies uh, associated to, to Omantel. Uh, Omantel acquired 21.9% uh, of Zain Group. Uh, Zain Group operates in um, nine countries, Morocco, Jordan, uh, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi, Bahrain, and Sudan. Uh, also, Omantel uh, France, uh, mainly managing the landing of A1 cable system in, uh, in, in France. And from this pop in, in, in France, Omantel provides its uh, uh, backhaul, uh, Europe backhaul services in, in Europe. Uh, also, we have uh, Oman Data Park. Oman Data Park is uh, the local data center company. Uh, it's provide, uh, it provides managed services, uh, cloud services, and uh, uh, network, uh, security as a service, network as a service in Oman. Uh, Munkin is uh, the Internet of Things uh, uh, company, uh, arm of uh, Omantel. Uh, Infoline, Infoline is a call uh, center uh, company, uh, and they provide uh, calls, uh, call center uh, solution and uh, cl uh, con uh, cloud contact uh, center solutions. Uh, Oman Fiber Optics, the biggest uh, fiber optic factory uh, manufacturer in, in Oman. Uh, also, we have um, the JV with Equinix. Equinix is well known, one of the biggest data center uh, uh, provider in, in, in the world with the two, 200 plus uh, data centers uh, around the world. Then we have uh, Red Bull Mobile and uh, Rana. They're uh, resellers and Omantel own 40% of this uh, company. Uh, on wholesale uh, side, uh, Omantel uh, provides services uh, to its international, uh, uh, on its international network uh, to all uh, customers around the world, mainly from three, uh, uh, three hubs uh, in, um, in Singapore and Oman and uh, Marseille in, in France. Uh, Omantel invested in uh, 20 uh, submarine uh, cables. Uh, 14 of these uh, 20 submarine cables lands in uh, Oman. Uh, also, we have uh, 11 uh, global pops. Uh, also, to support the international network, we have a dedicated uh, network uh, center, uh, INOC, uh, dedicated for wholesale uh, uh, customers and monitor the services uh, on our international network. On our services um, uh, portfolio, um, uh, just a quick uh, look at our 
services we, we offer to our customers on infrastructure. Uh, we provide co-location, we provide uh, cross connects, especially in, uh, in, in, in France and uh, locally, and also investing in submarine uh, cables. On uh, connectivity, uh, we offer uh, IPLC, we offer MPLS, we offer connectivity within the uh, within our pops, also we offer uh, connectivity uh, to GCC countries and terrestrial routes to Yemen, UAE, and Saudi. Internet, uh, uh, internet services, we, we offer uh, dedicated internet access and IPT, uh, uh, IP transit services on carrier voice, uh, carrier services, and uh, roaming services to our customers. Oman uh, and, and, and in Oman um, is uh, well uh, located, uh, con connecting the east with the uh, west. Uh, the strategic uh, location outside the Persian Gulf in the middle between Singapore and Europe help us to, to serve different markets and reach uh, different, different markets from, uh, from Oman being in the center. Uh, also, Oman invested in uh, new golden routes. Uh, to to East Africa, also the cable to uh, also the 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 route to Australia and also to uh, to Iran and uh, the uh, GCC countries. Looking at Europe uh, and uh, US, we have um, we have uh, multiple uh, redundant cable systems. Um, uh, to, to serve the traffic uh, over there by Oman and also uh, on Oman Tel France also to provide uh, the backhaul uh, to, to Europe and uh, on, 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 on top of this also managing the cross-connect uh, requirements. Uh, on uh, Arabian Peninsula, uh, we have very good balanced relation with all countries. Uh, Omantel are considered as uh, the entrance to uh, GCC uh, countries when for any uh, for any traffic that comes from East uh, Asia. Uh, also, uh, we have terrestrial uh, cables uh, going uh, from Oman to 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 neighboring country like Saudi, uh, Yemen, and UAE. Uh, on um, on uh, East Africa. Um, we have Gulf uh, to Africa uh, cable to Somalia and so on to that to be extended to Ethiopia also. Uh, Oman is the first cable that's launched into uh, Somalia and more and more investment to, to come over here. We land two points in, in Somalia and Barbara and Osasas uh, uh, in, in Somalia. Uh, in Iran, uh, the good part here, we have very good uh, neutral and diplomatic relation with Iran. We are considered as one of the important gateway to, to serve Iran uh, requirements and connectivity. Uh, we have three cables uh, connecting Oman with, uh, with Iran. Also on China, um, reaching out to China, Via, via, via Pakistan, up north of Pakistan to China. And India, we have multiple uh, of uh, cables that's connecting us with India and more and more to, uh, cables uh, to uh, come. Uh, South uh, East Asia, we have Oman is uh, as a location, uh, is uh, strategically in the middle between Singapore and uh, Europe. And that's help, helping us to serve uh, these uh, uh, markets uh, all on um, Australia, uh, the first Australian cable system going uh, west beyond uh, Singapore, not landing uh, to Singapore and bringing the capacity and the traffic to uh, the Gulf. It's a straight point to point from Perth in Australia to, uh, to, to the region. And this capacity also can be uh, extended, extended to, um, to, to, to the Gulf and to, to Africa and all the way to Europe and US. Okay, uh, Oman, uh, Oman uh, as a location in the center, uh, we co consider it as a, a hotspot, uh, a gateway also to grow in uh, markets. Uh, we cover close to half of the global uh, population. Uh, markets where content players and international uh, operator cannot uh, reach, or it's very, it's very uh, challenging for them uh, to reach. 
looking at uh, East Africa, uh, the growth, we expect the growth of uh, two to three uh, percent. Um, and on, uh, in Arabian uh, Peninsula, we, 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 we expect a growth of around 10 to 14 uh, uh, percent. And uh, Western Asia, we expect, uh, we expect uh, the highest growth where we are talking about 20 to 29, uh, 29 uh, percent uh, growth of traffic via Oman. And if we consider also China, we, if we, we, we consider Pakistan, we consider Iran and Sri Lanka. Uh, so, uh, Oman's strategy was based on uh, elements that uh, will, uh, will make uh, uh, Oman to establish a true neutral interconnect hub uh, that, uh, that will make uh, Oman uh, and Oman ecosystem uh, growing. So these uh, elements are, when, uh, are connecting uh, Middle East uh, with Europe and Asia with Oman in the center. And uh, uh, connectivity, Oman, Oman Tel will continue uh, investing in submarine uh, cables and terrestrial uh, routes and uh, reaching, uh, reaching to new uh, markets. Uh, strategy hub, making Oman as, as a strategy hub for uh, existing and potential uh, uh, customers and access. Uh, Allowing, uh, allowing everyone and everyone is welcome to, to, to access uh, our network with a competitor local or uh, international regional uh, competitors. And this is, and this is something, uh, this is something that, uh, that's really healthy. It will be, it will, it, there'll be more option for uh, our, our uh, potential customer existed comes to, uh, customer to have more option when it comes to uh, services uh, uh, also that can be can push uh, the, uh, the prices to be more reasonable and feasible uh, on top of it also also this will lead eventually to uh, increase in the demand uh, uh, data center we, uh, we uh, building an open data center uh, for everyone is where everyone is welcome to join the data center and trade and exchange uh, capacities Okay, uh, there is a great uh, need for uh, neutral regional interconnect hub uh, in, in the region, uh, and this is uh, and just uh, this is to replicate whatever is happening in uh, Europe and Asia, and also in order for the region to grow in terms of connectivity and services offered uh, and uh, for for regional uh, and international partners to deploy their. Uh, 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 networks in in our region, which we don't have uh, today, and this is due to because every 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 um, uh, every uh, operator in the in the region, they think they are number one, and they think they have the best uh, best location. Uh, lack of choices for our uh, customers, uh, especially that are for uh, the customer that for, uh, forecast to expand deploy in our region. Because we don't have open data centers, uh, where, where we don't have uh, open neutral data center for for customer to uh, to access. Uh, no pure uh, and uh, real interconnect ecosystem uh, to to for uh, for uh, the hyperscalers, content companies, and the operators to come in and exchange. Uh, exchange and trade uh, capacities, uh, the overcharges and the challenges of uh, deployment, uh, of deploying uh, POPs uh, in, in the region, because we don't have a hub where, where these uh, content companies and uh, hyperscaler, they have to go and deploy in each, uh, in each uh, market or a region. Uh, the majority of all international submarine cables uh, connecting the Gulf uh, uh, with the world is landing uh, in Oman. And these, the, these all cables uh, with access to MC1, uh, all the cables will be, um, will, 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 can, can be, can be accessed to, to, to MC1, uh, even uh, for our, uh, the cable that land with the, the second operator in Oman.
Uh, also, we have to talk about uh, one of uh, the largest uh, uh, submarine uh, cables that Oman Tel invested in, uh, AA1, uh, is one of the world's largest cable uh, passing uh, three, uh, 20 uh, countries connecting Hong Kong with Marseille with the uh, neutral landing in Equinix. So all, all the parties are who, uh, who are in the consortium of AA1 have a direct access to, to MC1 and they can start trade and exchange uh, and interconnect in, uh, in uh, Equinix uh, data center in Oman. On the new investments and uh, Mantel are working on and uh, already the, the work started is Majan, uh, Majan cable uh, system. Uh, and this cable also to, to extend the reach out of uh, Mantel. Uh, this cable is going to land in open facilities in Jordan, in uh, Saudi Arabia, in Sudan, Djibouti, and India. Uh, there will be two landing uh, points in Muscat and Salala. Also, also the new resilient uh, trusted routes on a mountain and Zane network between uh, KSA and Jordan. And also, uh, on top of this, uh, this to be extended uh, directly to to uh, MC1. I touched boys, uh, I, I touch point on uh, Oman Australia cable uh, system. Uh, the work already started, and this cable to uh, is a direct uh, point point between uh, Australia and Perth, uh, direct uh, to Oman. And this also can this this uh, this um, uh, the, the capacities can be extended to to different uh, markets uh, to let's uh, to Africa to uh, uh, to uh, Europe and US and uh, and uh, and and for sure this will be landing in MC one. So. After uh, Muscat, uh, uh, the new strategy of Mantel is uh, in making uh, Salala the second hub, and the new gateway to Middle East between uh, as, as a bridge between Asia and Africa and uh, Europe, and it a uh, stepping stone to Africa as it's uh, on the main uh, highway to uh, to Europe and connecting also Africa, the the, the closest point from Oman to to Africa. Uh, this uh, the first cable that was deployed and uh, RFS uh, in, in Salala was Gulf, uh, Gulf uh, to Africa and this was uh, serving Somalia mainly and soon uh, to serve also Ethiopia. Um, multiple uh, tier one carrier and hyperscalers uh, uh, cable system investor, uh, uh, they showed the interest in landing uh, their their cables in Salala, and also these also to be, uh, some of them also would like to land in Muscat and Salala. Uh, last but not uh, the least, um, uh, what's, what, what's the beauty of uh, Equinix uh, Muscat? Uh, it's the first carrier neutral data center in the region, we can say that proudly, and also we want we want MC1 to be the most connected data center, not in the region only, but this to be the most connected data center in the world. What's, what what Amantel uh, are bringing into this uh, GV? What uh, what Amantel um, uh, capability that can 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 add and uh, and make uh, MC1 successful? Amantel is the, the uh, a licensed operator. Uh, in, in Oman, uh, uh, we are talking about 14 international sub, uh, subsea uh, uh, systems, uh, and these all will have uh, have access to MC1, and it's growing. And even the future cable to be extended to MC1, even the the terrestrial uh, to have access that have access uh, to GGCC will be extended to MC1. Um, uh, Equinix. Uh, uh, they, 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 technically, operationally, the best. They, 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 they follow the best uh, practice uh, when it comes to in running uh, data centers. Uh, they have a presence of uh, the sales team everywhere where they're going to sell services in uh, MC1 services like, uh, like uh, colocation, uh, selling internet exchange, selling cloud services. 
Um, uh, we want to emphasize here that uh, Omantel is uh, a customer like any other customer in MC1. And this, da this data center is fully managed operationally and, uh, and commercially by, uh, by, uh, uh, by Equinix. Thank you very much. That's all about uh, my presentation, Eric, and back to you. Thank you very much, Fahad. Just a, a quick question with, with regards to, to, to your presentation. You were talking about the new strategy and and uh, and uh, Salala, but uh, you know, and and um, so so what are the main opportunities for 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 Omantel, and 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 how will let's say the 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 new hub in Salala also im have an impact on uh, on MC One as well? Yes. Uh, plus to the points, uh, Eric, that I mentioned about uh, Salala. Uh, in, in, the, in the slide uh, I just uh, presented, uh, that the economics around cable system are uh, changing and landing further uh, north on outside of the Arabian Gulf will be more expensive for landing uh, landing party and going inside the Persian Gulf will be uh, economically and, and feasible. Uh, this, this will boost uh, both Muscat even more, uh, uh, also, uh, positioning Salada even better since it is uh, less off uh, the highway. Muscat and Salada will have many redundant uh, connectivity on uh, terrestrial and sub sea. Uh, so, they will be, uh, the, it, both will be integrated together. Salada will be critical uh, stepping stone especially to Africa and Muscat will still will still uh, keep uh, keep on serving as the content and regional uh, carrier uh, hub uh, to serve the Middle East and uh, also as a an, uh, an, uh, natural stop in between Singapore and uh, Europe. Uh, we want to emphasize also uh, that MC1 will be an essential part of uh, Omantel uh, ecosystem. Thank you very much, Eric, back to you. Oh, thank you, Fahad. Um, so gentlemen, um, looking at the clock, we do not have that much time anymore in, in this hour, but, but, but uh, thank you very much for, 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 your, for your presentations, both of you. But, but, but we still have a couple of questions from, from, uh, with you and also from, uh, from the audience. So Martin, if I can, can start with you and then maybe Fahad, you, you want to um, answer as well, but may please let me ask you to answer. In, in a quick way. Um, Martin, um, MC1 came to life. It's, it's a huge and great achievement of partnership between Equinix and Omantel. So, I mean, we both you both mentioned already a couple of things, but, but, but what's so special about the, the MC1 and the necessity to connect to MC1? Well, well in terms of uh, MC1 is a new build uh, Equinix facility built to Equinix global standards uh, as such. It, uh, it meets all the requirements of the Uptime Institute in terms of availability. Um, it has redundant uh, systems, redundant entry points, cooling power, etc. is all um, redundant. And um, ISO certifications and uh, compliance around PCI, etc. Are, are in place, as is typical for all of Equinix facilities. So it, in that respect, it's like every other new build Equinix data center. Power dense, yes, because in, a, in essence, we've got to provision for the next 10, 20, 15, 20 years and power requirements never go down. Um, and um, the positioning of MC1 and the investment, both in terms of resources and financial that Equinix has made jointly with the Martel uh, means that this is for keeps. Um, and, and our intention here is to, to literally change the region and to put Oman on the map uh, alongside other globally significant uh, hubs, such as Singapore, such as London, such as Tokyo. Um, it may sound extreme at the moment, but I think fast forward a few years and um, these words won't, won't look so uh, optimistic. I, I think it's perfectly feasible. Thank you, Martin. Fat, well, well, why do you think it's, uh, the MC1 is so special? I, I live MC1 every day. So before answering your question, um, I'm really proud of this unique partnership between uh, the uh, the world's largest data center operator and 
Amantel being the operator with the highest amount of international uh, cable uh, uh, connectivity in the region. Uh, the majority of all international uh, subsea cables coming into GCC is landing in Oman with Amantel. So all these cables are reachable from within uh, MC1 with uh, with the unique not only for the region but even on international uh, comparison where you have a data center you can uh, you can access 14 uh, where where do you have a data center that you have an access of 14 international sub uh, subsea cables in, in the region not many um, not many data center can compete uh, with that uh, secondly the most important mc1 is the first uh, carrier neutral data center in the region, and we need to emphasize on that. Yes, Omantel is a shareholder and a data center uh, is operated under Omantel uh, license in Oman, but uh, commercially and operationally uh, fully managed by Equinix, and Omantel is treated as any other customer. Uh, the, da the data center, uh, MC1, is open for any international and national uh, customer including uh, the back uh, the back hole access uh, for example pulling your own let's say for the uh, the local uh, service provider and operators they can pull your their, their own fiber uh, and uh, it's not not exclusive to omantel uh, only uh, and uh, even Omantel um, uh, national operators, as I mentioned, have their uh, their own access into the data center, and they can sell uh, they can uh, sell that on a competitive market to customer on MC1. So also to add, we have true competition, uh, which for customer me uh, uh, customer have the choice to ch to choose and to choose uh, the services they want the. The customer they want to work on, uh, for sure, the quality and, and um, the quality and customer experience will be enhanced uh, much and and better. Uh, prices will be affordable uh, for uh, for all partners and for, especially for the existing and uh, and partners that are coming from outside the region. Uh, truly unique for the region, the MC1. And that's why we are seeing um, a lot of positive and attractive response from uh, global tier one carrier, uh, global content and uh, cloud uh, provider and players, uh, together with the geographical location of uh, the data center. Uh, I can I can repeat this and say this is really truly unique. Uh, back to you, uh, Eric. Thank you, Fahad. Uh, Martin, um, just quickly, quickly, quickly tipping on, 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 on tech and on, uh, and, and, and on the peering. I mean, um, new technologies push us to, to uh, and, and they have a huge impact on our service portfolios. So how can uh, and how do uh, new technologies reshape, uh, let's say, our services? And what role can, uh, can MC1 uh, play in that? And on top of that, if you hopefully can combine a little bit uh, with, with, with the role that uh, that, that pairing uh, is, is, is playing as well. So actually three questions to you, Martin. No, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> we can roll it all together. I mean, you know, when we look at actually what's happening, um, new technology is basically facilitating, in most cases, people's connection to the internet. People are in, in increasingly consuming short form and long form stream video services. Um, these uh, will be consumed as 4K video on multiple devices in many, many millions of households. And the result is a huge demand on the networks to deliver. Now, providing the bandwidth cost is sufficiently low and the bandwidth is sufficiently there, that is that the carriers and the regulators don't get in the way of this process, the new technology is basically increasing throughput um, for the likes of stream video, et cetera, dramatically. Also, new technologies such as 5G, uh, which is effectively mobile broadband, will facilitate pervasive computing because sidebands can be used for other stuff, embedded intelligence in everything around us. And equally, low Earth orbit constellations will increase the reach. And with something like SpaceX, it's a broadband network in the sky, effectively. So I see nothing but technology facilitating millions and billions of people across the planet being able to consume internet services. The way that that traffic is exchanged is peering and interconnection. And, and a peering hub is essentially 
a co-location space where people exchange the big data flows on physical cross connects and the smaller data flows are aggregated on IX. That there explains 80% of internet traffic in, in two sentences. So this is crucial stuff for now and for the future. Thank you so much, Martin. Now, um, last one, and that, that's always the most difficult one, gentlemen, because we, we, we're always trying to scope a little bit the future. And um, uh, so, uh, Fahad, um, from your point of view and from Omantel point of view, um, what does the future hold for the industry in the, in the, uh, in the region? Well, what, what will we see in general? I can, uh, when it comes to future, that's, uh, uh, that's a very uh, difficult question. Uh, but I can highlight that um, for us, MC1 data center uh, will work uh, in making it the most connected uh, uh, data center in the region and the world. Omantel also uh, investing in more cables to continue expanding uh, its uh, fro uh, footprint to new markets like uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait, uh, Jordan, Sudan, and Bahrain. Omantel also investing in having more hubs locally and outside uh, Oman. Uh, and, 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 and for me personally, uh, Omantel are play, play, playing uh, a major, uh, a major uh, part in uh, uh, the country uh, overall uh, uh, ecosystem and the country overall uh, vision 2040. And these, and, and, and also feed other sectors in, in, the, car, in, in the country and making Oman a hub not only in, in telecom, also in other, other uh, sector uh, aspects. Thank you very much, uh, Mark, uh, Eric. Thank you, Fahad. Martin, your uh, crystal ball. Crystal ball. For the region. <laughs> um, so, well, in terms of the future, uh, as well as people consuming content and internet connectivity, and I would say MC1 uh, is typical um, uh, I would say what Equinix will do over time, Muscat becomes a globally significant regional hub and regional hub, um, there'll be an MC1. There may be more phases of MC1, there'll be an MC2, there'll be an MC3. There is no limit to how many facilities we can build based upon how successful this joint venture is and how much we manage to create this transformative hub. After we've built the peering ecosystem and the network density founded on the Equinix um, kind of approach. Um, the next phase is digital transformation. Cloud on ramps are essential to that, but um, Equinix Fabric, which is our you know, global um, uh, digital economy accelerator, if you will, that will undoubtedly be launched in region and will grow and become increasingly significant as a hub for enterprises wanted to transform leveraging technology and the new technology will be about pervasive computing. It will be about big data analytics even more than it is today. And particularly, it will be about AI. A recent announcement with NVIDIA about AI at the edge, um, where people are repatriating workloads from public clouds and placing them closer. Um, I, I believe that, that that is the future, where AI becomes embedded and around us every day. Depends on which dystopian movies you watch, Eric, whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I think it's coming. Thank you so much, Martin. And with, uh, with, with, with these words from, uh, from Fahad and from, uh, uh, from Martin, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we come to the end of this very, very impressive and uh, interesting uh, uh, panel session. And I would like to thank uh, for the keynote speaking from, uh, from Martin, of course. Thank you so much. And Fahad, very much, very interesting. And, and thank you for sharing your, your thoughts and, uh, and your ideas. And of course, uh, uh, some of your new objectives for the, for the, for the future. Uh, and um, uh, I would like to thank as well the sponsor Equinix and Omantel for this uh, for, for this webinar. And next one, gentlemen, congratulations on this fantastic, marvelous, beautiful partnership. And I wish you all the best of luck with uh, with this and more MCs to come. So um, so um, uh, congratulations on this one. Um, so. Um, I would like to thank everybody out there. Uh, again, uh, sponsor Equinix and, and Omantel, Fat and, and Martin for their keynote presentations and for my side, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for now. Stay tuned with GCCM and then the Care community because we're there with the very in informative uh, um, sessions for you. So over to you, Laura, back to the studio in, uh, in Berlin.
Thank you, Eric. Dear all, we are at the end of this webinar session, and I would like to thank our keynote speakers, Martin and Fahad, for the interesting presentation, our panelists for sharing their knowledge, and of course, our audience for participating and listening. We are looking forward to welcoming you in our both physical and virtual events this year. For more information, please visit our events portal. If you're interested in supporting and sponsoring one of our future branded webinars, contact CC Team. For all updates and fresh content, follow us on our four social media channels. Also, subscribe to our Telegram news channel to receive exclusive invitations to CC webinar live sessions. Goodbye for now.